Welcome to the channel and welcome to 8th edition 40k. It's Tyranids versus Space Marines. In this 2000 match point battle report, High Fleet Thanatos are going to be rampaging through this ruined city and standing against them. Are the Space Marines of the 13th. It's the new Tyranid Codex versus Space Marines. We are playing Cleanse and Capture. That's the game where you get three objectives a turn, every turn. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the new Tyranids can do. Um, we've got Codex, we've got uh, three objectives running all the way down the center of the table. Two on this side, one on that side. Dawn of War deployment. I've, I've got this deployment zone here. The 13th will be deploying first. Tyranids deploying second, the majority of the objectives on this side, which is exactly what Tyranids want, basically coming at me, coming at me very fast, very quickly. I set up this table specifically for Tyranids with lots of large line of sight blocking terrain all over the place because uh, when you're fighting with a close combat army, you need that line of sight blocking terrain, otherwise gun line armies will blow you off the table lots of opportunities to get plus one cover safe, plus one to the armor safe for being in these ruins here. I might have nerfed myself a bit too much actually by putting a bit too much terrain down. The interesting thing as well is remember only infantry can go through walls. They have the tools and the cutting tools and the breach charges that they need to, to go through walls and doors and things like that. Um, so monsters and vehicles, for example, wouldn't be able to get in this section back here. If I put one of my vehicles here, it would never be able to get out again unless I have the fly keyword and my tanks don't have the fly keyword. Um, so yeah, only infantry can go through walls and doors and things like that. Obviously, monsters and tanks will be able to go through the gaps in the ruins there. A uh, couple of other things. This battle mat is one of my new battle mats. It comes from P Work Studios. P Work War Games, Paul Walk War Games. There'll be a link in the description below. And today I'm fighting Dave. Say hi, Dave. Hi. <laughs> And Dave has brought along his Tyranids with High Fleet Thanatos. Let's go and check out these uh, armies. Right, this is 2,000 points worth of Space Marines. It's a battalion and a spearhead detachment. Gives me seven command points. Leading the charge, Brother Captain Sol Garrow with his burning, burning blade. Um, I've given him the Wall of Traits Storm of Fire this time. Storm of Fire means any Space Marines within six inches of him when shooting, and you roll a six to wound, the AP increases by minus one. So AP minus one becomes AP minus two on sixes to wound. And AP minus two becomes AP minus three on sixes to wound. Should also mention using uh, Iron Hands chapter tactics because it's just easier. That means my whole army has a six up feel no pain. There's a lieutenant with him, lieutenant. And <laughs> I've got uh, 50 odd uh, tacticals here, 50 odd troops. Um, two units of scouts to shoot you close combat and three units of tactical marines. There is a unit of nine. In the unit of nine, I put a plasma as well because of points. And in the other three, there's flamers or combi flamers. And stern guard in the backfield with two combi plasmas. And that's a unit of devastators. And that's the battalion detachment. Um, what I wanted to do is bring bodies because the new Tyranids have lots and lots and lots of bodies. So I wanted to bring lots and lots of bodies. That way, the body count, the kill count should be really high. This should be a really, really bloody game. So that was it. I wanted to bring lots of bodies. And the bikes haven't been along for a long time. So I thought, let's bring some bikes because let's face it, having lots of bodies means I don't have a many speed. I don't have much speed at all. So I needed some speed, some mobility to get around and score some objectives here or there. So I brought bikes. There's a grav in every squad. There's a close uh, power weapon in every squad. And there's five of them. And then in the onslaught detachment, I think that's the one with the heavies. Uh, there's a tech marine to heal those tanks, a predator and a whirlwind, and two quad heavy bolter uh, turrets from Forge World. So that's it, some dacker in the backfield, some bikes for speed, lots of bodies, lots of blood. Let's go and check out these Tyranids. Right, this is 2000 points worth of Tyranids. It's two battalion detachments, which gives nine command points. However, uh, Dave brought along two relics with him. So he's already spent a command point. So that drops him down to eight command points. And uh, High Fleet Thanatos is High Fleet Gorgon adaption? Uh, yeah, High Fleet 
adaption for Gorgon. Gorgon, which is reroll wound rolls of one. Why are you picking that particular high fleet, Dave? Um, well, mainly because it suits this style of army. It's uh, based around close combat. So to reroll ones in the fight phase yeah. is where I want to be. So. Yeah. So Sivan Talons reroll hit rolls of one, and then with Gorgon rerolling wound rolls of one. I can't see much Daka in this army at all. It looks like it's all very aliens in your face type stuff. <laughs> That's the idea, yeah. Nice. Okay, so what you got here, these are the HQs. In the first battalion, we have the Swarm Lord. Yeah. His warlord trait is fixed. That's alien cunning. What does that do? It allows him to redeploy after everybody's finished deploying at the end of the deployment phase. So you can pick him up and move him? Yes. Nice. Uh, psychic powers, he has Smite, yep. Catalyst, yep. and Paroxysm. Okay. Just because I haven't used it for a long time, we okay. can give it a whirl. Uh, the second HQ in that battalion detachment is the Broodlord. Yep. His psychic powers are Smite and Onslaught. Nice. And then we have three troops in that detachment. Okay. 18 Termagants. Yep. Which ones are the Termagants? Uh, Termagants. 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 Uh, 12 Gene Stealers. Yep. And 24 Hormagants. 24. Nice. And then we've got three Tyrant Guard, because the Swarm Lord needs Tyrant Guard. If he's not coming down in a Tyrannocyte, which is, to be fair, actually the probably best choice. <laughs> yeah. And these yeah. guys can uh, take wounds for the on Swarm the, Lord, right? On the, on the 2 plus, they, they will take wounds for him. Yep. Okay. So they're his bodyguard, right? Okay. Uh, I have six Ravenous. Yeah, oh, these ones, yeah, yeah. That's those ones. Uh, I've got a Carnifex, which is WYSIWYG, as it is. Is he a Screamer Killer? He's not a Screamer Killer, I'm afraid. But he, no. does, he does have the Tusks, and he does have the Spore Cysts, which are minus one to hit him. Is he? Uh, in the shooting phase. Nice. Uh, Thresher Scythe for yep. an extra attack as well, oh, and Adrenal Guns. Um, which obviously increased his movement and charge range, or advanced, I should say, in charge range. I'm glad you know what all this stuff does, because <laughs> I've got no <laughs> idea. I have to I confess, also, this is about the third term that I've fought bugs ever, really. Also what? Sorry, also in that detachment is the Trigon Prime at the back, and he also has adrenal guns. Okay. Which again, And he can burrow up, right? He can burrow up, and he can bring... Some of his buddies with him as well. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you can set him up nine inches away from an enemy unit. And, some, and uh, is it any one of these guys can come up through the tunnel as well? Any unit of troops. Troops. I so. think it is written now in the codex. I'll have to do a check, but it will be troops in this yeah. case anyway, because the gene stealers will be borrowing up with him. Yeah, well, the gene stealers now have this infestation node thing. So you can mm. put four of them in your deployment zone and they can come up through them as well. Yes. So new yes. ways to deploy with gene stealers. It helps them getting, uh, avoid getting shot, doesn't it, before, yeah. uh, if you don't go first. Absolutely. But if they're underground, you can't shoot them anyway. Yep. Uh, the second battalion detachment yep. is a winged hive tyrant. Okay. He has, actually, as you can see, he's got two pairs of scything talons. Yep. Uh, psychic powers are smite, psychic scream, again, I haven't used that for a while, and yep. catalyst. Yeah. And he also has a bio artifact, which is the Yimgal factor, although the pronunciation of that might be a bit suspect. Uh, that effectively gives him a boost in close combat, but it's random as to what I get. With random strength, boost in close combat, yeah. You know, okay. Strength, tough attack, etc. Okay. Uh, second HQ in that battalion is the Turbigan. Yep. Uh, psychic power, Smite and the Horror. Yep. I've also got a bio artifact, which is what I paid the command point for, yep. which is hyper adaptive biology. Okay. If, at the end of the phase in which you wound him for the first time, his toughness will go up by one. Really? Yes. Takes a wound and goes to toughness. So it's toughness three at the start and goes up to toughness four. Close. Close to that. Close to Is that going to be a toughness nine Turbagon? It will be. As soon as it takes a wound. Kill, you don't kill him in one phase. Wow. I like it. That's definitely worth spending a command point on. Okay. Uh, also three troops in that battalion detachment. Yeah. That's required. 20 Termagants. Another yeah. 20 Termagants. Are they? Okay. And three Ripper Swarms. And three Ripper Swarms. So what we've got here, what I see in front of me is a sea of bugs with very little shooting. Obviously these guys can shoot, but not a, not a lot. I see a sea of bugs, which is gonna be re-rolling hit rolls of one, re-rolling wound rolls of one. I can see a couple of deployment options. There's a bunch of different psychics here. We should talk about it a, a little bit because the codex is new. So synapse range has gone out to 12 inches now. And essentially everything with the synapse rule within 12 inches of a synapse creature is fearless. Yeah. Yes, and although for the Hive Tyrants it's more than 12 inches. Okay, Hive Tyrants, that bubble gets even larger. It's, 
And then Shadow in the Warp is 18 inch range, but I don't have any psychers. And Instinctive Behavior has gone out to 24 inches now. Uh, long, the long and short of it is if you're outside of the Instinctive Behavior bubble, then you, um, uh, if you try and shoot or charge a unit that isn't your closest, you have a negative. But if you're always basically trying to shoot and charge your closest thing, instinctive behavior doesn't really have any effect anymore. It's going to be very much limited compared to what we've had to live with in yeah. the past. But the sign-ups um, is still critical to avoid morale checks, yeah. especially in these uh, little... Yeah, synapse will still work, particularly on the little ones. If you shoot the big guys and the synapse bubble collapses, then these guys potentially could be taking morale tests and running away. But I like the fact that your bubbles, your ranges, your auras have increased. So it should be very interesting to see what they can do. And I like the fact that you've brought so many little bugs. It's going to be a bug hunt. Let's go on to deployment. Before the deployment, one more thing. All of the troops, of course, have objective secured now. So they're highly likely to outnumber me close to some of these objectives. Here we are after deployment. We've got some Ripper Swarms, Ravener, Hive Tyrant up in, flying above the battlefield. Uh, Trigon all in reserve, ready to come up. And the Warlord trait for Swarmy, who is over here, way back there, means he can move. But we do that at the start of the first battle round, after we figure out who goes first. So the Tyranids managed to deploy way before me. They're going to have plus one to the dice roll to see who goes first. And we've got bugs. Lots of bugs all the way across the line. That's the only objective for High Fleet Thanatos. Thanatos down there. The other three are in the middle of the table and two of them in my deployment zone. So this very aggressive, very close combat orientated High Fleet will be coming charging down towards my lines. And I've put some scouts here, 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 and somewhere else over there um, to push the Deep Strikers back because, as, as I mentioned, Trigon, Hive, um, what's he called? Big guy. Hive Tyrant. Hive Tyrant, him, Raveners, and all of that. They're coming in. So I've trying to block up my battle grid so that there's nothing jumping in behind me, jumping in down in my lines. And line of sight is really bad. The whirlwind, of course, can fire indirectly. And here's the captain-lieutenant combo. Um, I really want to shift them around there because the devastators are up there. So in my first turn, I'm going to be moving to um, improve that uh, shooting combo. And then I've got ranks of guys. Uh, I didn't need my tech marine in the end because the shooting in the, there isn't very much shooting in the um, Tyranid army at all. This is going to be starship troopers. They're just going to be swarming straight towards me. So I don't need to keep my tech marine back next to the vehicles to heal them. He's there ready to run forward and die heroically. Bikes anchoring the front uh, right and left flank, some there, some down here, ready to swing round and score some objectives later on. Hopefully, maybe, but essentially I am I'm castled up uh, with a wave upon wave of guys ready to defend myself against this swarm, against this horde, this splinter of High Fleet Gorgon. It was Gorgon, right? It was Gorgon. Gorgon, Thanatos being a splinter of High Fleet Gorgon. They will come charging through the ruins of their cities and down into the ranks of the 13th. Okay, we're using the chapter approved rules to see who goes first. So essentially it's a dice off. The person who put down their army first gets a plus one to this dice roll and you can't command point it. So you want to roll up, Dave? See what you get. Don't get a six. Get a four. So that's a five. I need a six. That's a five. So <laughs> we have a re-roll. And six, which becomes a seven. I can't beat it. Tyranids have the initiative in this 2,000 point game. Of cleanse and capture. Let's go on to turn one. After you move Swarmy wherever you want to put him. In battle round one, Thanatos want to take as much ground as possible. Secure one, secure five, and dominate. We're interrupting the movement phase here before the deep strikers drop in. Swarmy jumped across and joined these guys. And essentially you advanced all the way across the line, I think. Except for the gene stealers, because we have a charge. Oh, a goodness. Hormagons, yes. they Hormagons? Oh yeah, the gene, gene stealers are in the tunnel. So the Hormagons could charge forward if they want to. 
and there's the broodlord so synapse there and then pretty much everything advanced the line is almost at halfway already the two objectives that the tyrannids want to take there's objective five so that isn't going to happen but there's objective one yes. and you're strung back to make sure you're still controlling it with this unit here they go around the crates there so there will be one point scored at least but then advancing the Swarmy, so at least he won't be charging this turn. But next turn, let's face it, turn two, there will be a wave crashing into the 13th. Carnifex coming forward, turn at Turbogon coming forward, more Gaunts. I'm just going to call them Gaunts, I don't know the difference between Gaunts and Gaunts. So lots and lots of bodies everywhere. And now we have some Deep Strikers coming in. And here we are at the end of the Moon Phase Scouts doing what they do. It's very good that I brought these guys along because it stopped this Hive Tyrant deep striking in there. And then with Swarmy giving that Hive Tyrant a move, it could have jumped up and over here and been in my castle in turn one. As it is, it's going to stay back there. Of course, the Swarm Lord will allow him to place it again. And I'm sure it's going to move at the end during the shooting phase. That's what the Swarm Lord can do. And then Scouts here pushing people back. Scouts here pushing people back, which means the Trigon, I want to say Trigon, with the Gene Stealers has been forced back to the middle of the table. The Ravener's forced back towards the middle of the table. Essentially, those Scouts have guaranteed that the Tyranids are still at the halfway point for now. The Ripper Swarms are in reserve, ready to pop up later on onto an objective, grab an objective later on. I might have one turn of shooting against this highly aggressive close combat army before they come crashing into my lines or potentially Dave could roll a lot of nines and get in close combat in turn one. So there is just a wave of chitin and screams coming through these empty destroyed ruins. Let's go on to the shooting phase. No, psychic phase. Okay, the Broodlord casting smite, leadership five. And that's a fail. <laughs> Next up, the Swarm Lord. Swarm Lord doing Catalyst. Catalyst, Warp Charge, I don't know. Uh, that's six. a 10, that gets off. So, who are you giving a 5 up for no pain to? Him. Him to himself? Yes. Nice. He can cast two, right? He can. His well, second power is going to be Smite. Smiting away, yep. Uh, that passes, so that's D3 Mortal Wounds. And what'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? Three. Three? Three Mortal Wounds Scouts are the closest unit. They have a six up Iron Hands chapter tactic save. And three of the Scouts fall down. Next up. The Winged High Tyrant. Okay. He's going to cast Psychic Scream. Psychic Scream. Nice. And this is a Warp Charge 5. It's like Smite. It hits the closest enemy unit, which will be the Scouts, and do D3 damage. Three. Three more. I think these Scouts are dead. The Scouts are dead. Scouts are wiped out with, with Psychic Scream, and that's First Blood. Are you still in range for Smiting? Ah, yes, these Scouts over here. So he can Psychic Scream one, Smite another one, that's a pass, and that's another D3 Mortal Wounds, which is three again. I like it, because you can Psychic Scream, do D3 Mortal Wounds, Smite, do D3 Mortal Wounds, um, potentially two D3 damage. And I rolled one six. The SM Bat Report logo is a six. So two of these scouts fall down. That's seven scouts dead so far, and all of those psychic powers done. Where else are we going? Turbigon. Turbigon. Can cast the horror on the warp. nearest unit bikes. What's the warp charge value on the horror? A six. Six, yep. And that passes. So the bikes are minus one to hit and minus one leadership, I think. And uh, yes. Does the Trigon have any Psychic Powers? No. Is that it for your Psychic Phase? It's the end of the Psychic Phase. Okay, so First Blood scored in the Psychic Phase as a wash of Psychic Power comes out of the Hive Mind and just obliterates. And in the Shooting Phase, the Winged Hive Tyrant jumps forward. Everything else out of range over here, or not shooting. Uh, what are you thinking with the Trigon? Well, it does have a limited shooting attack. It's not brilliant. Yes. If I shoot the Scouts, I'll probably kill a few, but you'll pull... The nearest ones away to make I would charge definitely longer. pull the, from the front, yes. So I think I am not going to shoot because I'd rather have the extra movement. Okay. If I can get the charge off, of course. Okay. So he's not shooting and everything else advancing or <laughs> yes. out of range or 
Can't these little guys shoot at those scouts? We but you'd rather they charge they hadn't advanced. Ah, okay. So is that it in the shooting phase? That winged hive turret moved forward? That was all my shooting. <laughs> no dice whatsoever. That was all your shooting. No bugs came forward. No, because your weapons are bugs. You know what I mean. They shoot. They shoot insects. Okay, assault phase. Oh dear. So in the charge phase, Trigon Prime charging the scouts. I did cause a wound on Overwatch. Typically you'd need a nine to get in, but you've got what? Adrenal guns. Okay, so plus one to this, so you need an eight. And that's a four and a one. That's a failed charge. Are you command point in this? No. No? No. no? And then the gene stealers coming in, have they got a gene adrenal glands as well? No, they can't have adrenal glands. Okay. If you and that's a four. And I'll overwatch them again. So failed yeah. charges here. So no damage done with overwatch, failed charges on the right flank, all the way across to the left flank. The blue 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 lord? He needs an eight, right? He does. Okay, let's see if you get in. Sure, you don't want a command point? No. No, and then these guys, I can't overwatch them because of no line of sight, but you can charge what you can't see. They need a five. And the little bugs are in. We do have an assault here. And then the last assault will be the hive tyrant versus this line. This front line here has actually got the plasma, so overwatch and yes. put an auto in. Here we are after the charge phase. Hormagons have a six inch pile in move, so in the middle of that, there are two scouts. They might live, <laughs> and the winged hive tyrant made it into the front line. So two first turn charges coming in. The winged hive right tyrant taking a wound to overwatch, but they've got 12 wounds now instead of 10, I think. Yeah. Anyway, so she's down, she, he, it is down to 11 wounds. Now we'll go into the fight phase. Before it swings, the hive tyrant has the yim Grohl factor, roll a d3, and a four is... One extra attack. One extra attack. So typically four attacks, plus one attack because it has two sets of Scything Talons, gets it up to five attacks, plus one attack with a young girl factor, that's six attacks, and now it gets an extra attack with its tail. So one attack with its tail, six attacks with it, seven attacks in total. So hitting on twos. Nice. Winning on threes. And because it's strength six, that's some ones. Oh yeah, cool. yeah, re-rolling ones. High Fleet Gorgon. No, that didn't help you at all. The tail is AP dash, so I get an armor save, which I make, and the monster saving talons are minus three, so I need sixes, which I don't make. And each of the monster saving talons is three damage, so I need three sixes to keep a guy alive. Nope, and three more sixes to keep a guy alive. Nope, so to only two space marines buy it in the end, and that could have been much worse. Taking two away from there, then in this fight phase, the Hormagons, they're Hormagons, right? Yeah. They slaughtered those three scouts with ease, and now my Space Marines will pile in and try and punch that thing back again. This is where we end up after the piling. That one there isn't fighting. Seven attacks because the sergeant's there, hitting on threes. That's pretty respectable. I'm wounding on five. And I get three wounds, so the Hive Tyrant has three saves to make. And that's really unfortunate. <laughs> that's three more wounds on the Hive Tyrant, putting it down to eight wounds remaining. So that's the end of turn one, and for some miracle, I did more damage to the Winged Hive Tyrant than it did to me. Lost two guys there, so they will pass the morale test, even if I rolled a six, plus two is eight, and that's their leadership. Two squads of scouts wiped out entirely, and you are scoring objective one behind the crates over there. So at the end of turn one for the Tyrants, it's two points to zero. But next turn, unless I shoot a considerable number of them, they are going to just swarm into my lines. So let's go on to the 13th turn one. Here are the Space Marine objectives and they're very fitting. Defend one, defend three and hold the line. And I won't be able to defend one or three because they're miles away from me. I might be able to hold the line but I need to kill that Hive Tyrant. Here we are after the Space Marine movement phase, and either defend three isn't going to happen, defend one isn't going to happen, and hold the line, kill the Hive Tyrant. So it's Operation Kill the Hive Tyrant to get a point. Uh, we've got a swarm coming in this way, plus the scouts, and the tank, the Predator's moved around, so it will be hitting on fours, dead shotting the Winged Hive Tyrant in the face. And then everything else here, swarming across to get towards the Hive Tyrant. I move my grav gun, that's the grav gun there, so he's in range two. And as you can see, just wave upon wave of blue 
trying to hold them back. The unit that was engaged in combat have fallen back so they won't be able to shoot. Kill the hive tyrant, simple as. And then I'll add the swarm lord to kill and other things afterwards to kill. And the only other bit of movement is over here. This is the horrid squad of bikes from here that zipped across. Scouts fired everything into the gene stealers, causing four wounds, four, five up and bun. And you make three of them. Then the bikes, the grav guns rapid fire is in range, is gonna shoot at the Trigon, Turvagon? Trigon Prime. Trigon Prime. Grav gun at the Trigon Prime, and then the twin bolt guns into the gene stealers. Here's the grav gun. It's rapid fire one, so one hit. Strength five, so I need a five, which I don't do. And then each of these, because they're twin bolt guns, are four shots each. Four times five is 20 shots into the gene stealers. So 20 shots, hitting on threes, wounding on fours. I did six wounds on the gene stealers. Saves coming up. And this time you made two, so four more gene stealers by it. Now we're rinsing and repeating with the second squad. This is the squad that's horrid, so it's forced to hit with them. Grav gun, not in rapid fire range. Forced to hit, that's a hit. Fives to wound, does wound. So minus three AP. Six up safe. Yep. Which you fail, and this does D three damage because your armor value, your save is a three, three up. Plus. So yeah, on a three up, if you have a armor save of three up, it does D three damage rather than one. So that does three damage to the Trigon Prime. Nice. Then a mixture of guns in rapid fire and not in rapid fire, hitting on fours at the Gene Stealers. Strength four, toughness four, winning on fours. Five wounds in total, five five up saves. And you only make one or two of those, so three more. Three. Is that? Yep, yeah, three of them, three more. So two more gene stealers die. So in the end, seven gene stealers brought down and three wounds on the Trigon Prime. I'll buy that for a dollar. Of course, the gene stealers will be fearless because of synapse. So let's try and kill a winged hive tyrant now. He did have eight wounds, he's down to four, and that was this squad of five. It's all a bit crazy there, but this squad of five, firing flamers and rapid firing bolt gun death through the cracks at him. Four left. Now the second squad of five, trying to take him out. Threes to hit. Beautiful. Fives to wound. Die, bug, die. Uh, three wounds there, three saves of three up. And he passes them, still four left. So there's a second squad, a third squad here, will fire at him. It's the, they're the only thing to fire at. It's him. They're out of range of everything else. So I'm trying to fire the units that are only going to fire at him before I have to choose some of the bigger guns because the Predator could fire down Scream and try and hit the Swarm Lord or try and hit something else instead. Um, so let's fire these guns. There is a Flamer there, which hits six times. Wounding on fives. And only wounds once. Three up safe. Nope. Chucking a grenade. And this squad is in the uh, bubble of Solgaro. So that hits. And it's strength six, toughness seven now. So I need fives to wound. Doesn't wound. Bolt gun death. Six shots. Threes to hit. Reroll them once. And there's three twos. <laughs> fives to wound. Uh, Reroll them ones. Two more wins, two three up saves, and he saves them. See, when I didn't wasn't filming, the first fusillade of attacks coming through the gaps in the ruins was absolutely devastating. As soon as I press record on the camera, he's saving everything. Okay, this bike squad will fire him. I'm in rapid fire range with a grab, so that's a thing. And I made sure I'm six inches from Garrow, and the, but all the rapid fire twin linked bolt guns are going into the bugs because there's a lot of bugs. So let's do the grab. Threes to hit, re-roll in ones. And then I need fives to wound, but I'm not re-rolling ones because too far away from the lieutenant. Two fives. Uh, two four up and vulnerable saves. And you make them both. I really shouldn't film anymore. In the end, the uh, bikes only cause seven damage on these bugs. They have a six up save to make, but I do kill five of them. Six. Six of them, because only one six made there. You can take him from the front if you want. I will. And he did as well, making the charge longer if I want to charge him, because they can move such a long way. So this squad of five firing in. There's no flamer in this squad, because I combat squatted. Threes to hit with no re-rolls. No benefits from any HQs nearby. Threes to wing, strength four, toughness three. They are toughness three, right? Yeah. 
uh, and I started filming, so I only did three wounds. <laughs> three six-up saves, sir. And three more bugs die. Right, captains and lieutenants come with mastercrafted bolt guns, so let's fire Sol Garrow. He hits. These need fives to wound, but they do do two damage. He does a wound. Yep, it is minus one, so a four up, or you take two damage on him, and you make him. And then the lieutenant will do the same thing. He hits on threes, he re-rolls one because of the captain. He will wound on fives. No, nothing, so they fired. Hmm, I might have to divert some big guns at this big bug. Let's fire the stern guard at the winged hive tyrant. Uh, and I've spent a stratagem for masterful marksmanship, so they've got plus one to wound. I am not in rapid fire range, 30 inch guns. And there's two plasmas. Let's fire the plasmas first. So these hit on threes. They both hit. It's strength seven versus toughness seven. So it would be fours, but with masterful. I know, it only applies to their special ammunition bolt gun stuff. So the plasma still only wounds on fours. And I get a wound, so you have a four up and vulnerable save to make. And he makes it again. And then the eight um, special ammunition bolt guns. So threes to hit. And I hit only four times. And so this is strength four versus toughness five. It would be fives to wound, but with masterful marksmanship, fours to wound. But I wound all four times. It is minus two. So it is four up and buns. And you fail two. Make two, putting him down to two wounds remaining. All right, let's do this. The Devastators are within six inches of Sol Garrow and the Lieutenant. There's three last cannons and a heavy bolter there, and I'm going to spend a command point for Hellfire shells at that. So, two's to hit with a signum. If I hit, it does d3 mortal wounds. And he's got two left. Where's what? This? And then the last cannons actually are going to fire at your hive guard, because I'm thinking, or tyrant guard. Them guys. He's got catalyst. The swarm one's got catalyst on him and a four up and vulnerable save, toughness high. So if I shoot them away first. That seems like a thing to me. Uh, so yeah, Heavy Bolter hitting on a two with the Stratagem and with the Signum. And I hit. And this does auto D3 Mortal Wounds on your Winged Hive Tyrant. One. Just as one. I could Command Point that as well, because I haven't done a Command Point reroll in the shooting phase. Yes, let's do that. Yay, I killed it. That's hold the line, but it did cost me two command points to do it. Yeah, perfect use of Hellfire shells. They were designed during the first Tyrannic Wars. Right, three Laz cannons in at the Tyrant Guard. Hitting on threes, they all hit. Strength nine, toughness, I don't know. Five. Five. Threes to wound. And that's three wounds. At minus three, I don't know if they ever save. Yep, they have a three up save, so that's down to a six up because it's last cannons to the face. And you did make one. Uh, those don't save, so this does d3 damage each. I'll have to roll them separately because it might not kill the first one. d6 each. First one does two damage. And the second one kills the, well, yeah, kills the first one. Just killed one. That wound's not spilling over mechanic really coming into effect. So let's fire the Predator at the Tyrant Guard as well, all of them. So last cannon's hitting on fours because they moved. They both hit. Nice. And wounding on threes. They both wound. So two six up saves on your tyrant guard. And did you make one? No. No, didn't make one. So that, sorry, this uh, does d6 damage on the first dude. He's dead. And on the second dude, he's dead. Which means the Predator auto cannon shots miss because, or basically because I fired at the same unit, they're wasted. But honestly, I'd rather they were wasted. It, it, it's, he's just firing blindly into this puff of red mist where the Tyrant Guard were. And if I fire the quad bolt at him, it is 12 shots. So we'll be hitting on threes, rerolling ones, but winning on fives. And he's got a three up save and a I feel no pain and he's going to come crashing in to my lines anyway. So maybe shoot him next turn. Maybe. Let's fire this quad bolter. Definitely at those bugs. 12 shots. It's like uh, four heavy bolters strapped together. Hitting on threes. That was eight hits. Wounded on threes. One hit the table. Floor. 
And that was six wounds at minus one, so six bugs go pop. And I'd really love to fire the next quad bolter at them, but I can't see them. So do I fire them at these guys or at the Broodlord? 36 inch range. Let's fire at the Broodlord. He is a character and not the closest, so I can't fire at the Broodlord. Let's not fire at the Broodlord. Do I want to fire at or over there? We'll just start on the Swarm Lord anyway. Let's start on the Swarm Lord. Let's see if I can hurt him. Uh, threes to hit. Rerolling ones. That's not bad. That was 11 hits. Strength 5, toughness 7, I think. So this is uh, fives to wound, but that storm of fire comes into effect for those sixes. Rerolling ones, three up save, AP minus one, so it drops it down to his four up and one. So storm of fire not coming to effect, but that's five saves to make of four up, and he's got catalyst, and you make one. Mm. Four feel no pains, and you make one of them as well. So he takes three wounds. And then the scouts in these, this window here, um, they fired down at the Swarm Lord as well and put a wound on him, which is amazing. Now, I was just debating about the Whirlwinds. Whirlwinds left the fire. I could kill the Gene Stealers down there, or there's a couple of choice targets. But um, having actually done a couple of wounds on the Swarm Lord, I'm thinking let's, let's keep going. So, 2d3 shots with the Whirlwind Vengeance Launcher. So, 3-4, four, that's four shots in total. He didn't move, and he's hitting on threes. And re-rolling one, so there's a two. Strength seven, toughness seven? Toughness seven. So only fours to wound. Uh, only one wound. It's minus one damage, but it does two damage. And he saves it anyway, so maybe I shouldn't have fired the whirlwind that in. But uh, anyway, that was good. He's down, down a few levels. Is he down a level? No. He's not down a level. At least he's bleeding. And that's the end of my turn one. I've I'm not going to charge. I'd rather overwatch them when they come in. They're going to be brutal. Rerolling hit rolls of one, rerolling wound rolls of one. I have held the line, and I'm definitely going to ditch one of those Defend Objective X cards. I think I did well. Killed the Hive Tyrant, killed the Tyrant Guard, hurt the Swarm Lord, mashed up a couple of these guys, and mashed up a couple of Gene Stealers down the flank, right and left flank. I am under no illusions. There is a wall of brown and chichen and terror about to crash into the Astartes lines. And it could be a very short game. <laughs> so let's find out what this high fleet can do in turn two. Right, tell a lie, I am going to do a charge. I think these scouts need to try and take out a couple more of these gene stealers before they come charging in and slaughtering everything. So let's charge in. And four will be enough, just. And after the parlay move, I end up there. Sergeant's got plus one attack because of the dual close combat evil, his um, combat weapon. Hitting on threes. And wounding on fours versus these gene stealers. I do a wound. One five up or invulnerable save. And a killer bug. So four gene stealers with rending claws striking back. They have 12 attacks. Hitting on threes. Out of 12 attacks. Only got five hits there. Wounding on fours. Rerolling one. So that's high fleet chronos coming to effect there. Four. So all of these are minus one AP. Yes. And if you had any sixes, it would be minus four AP. So I've got four five up saves to make instead of four up saves. And I make two of them. And then iron hands. And I make another one. Only losing a scout. Which means I don't have to make a morale test. Which means I do hold up your gene stealers for a turn. And if you fell back out of that combat, you can't charge. So at least that bit worked. So the scout's holding up some of the gene stealers. And now we go on to turn two. Here are the objectives for the Splinter of High Freak Kronos, um, Thanatos, High Fleet Thanatos. Uh, domination ditched, obviously. Secure 5 is right next to Sol Garrow. Defend 1 is the one back in his table half, and Kingslayer kill Sol Garrow, my captain. Here we are at the end of the movement phase, turn 2 for the Tyranids. The Broodlord isn't there, he's down there. We've just put him up there for visual purposes, but he's basically right behind that wall. He advanced a long way, and he can charge, because he's a Broodlord. Backed up by those Hormagaunts there. This unit is staying back because they are defending that objective. And at the end of my turn, that will be two points. And there's not a lot I can do about that. Swarm Lord, the HQ for High Fleet Thanatos, has come charging forward. The Carnifex moving up. The Turvagon moving up. Raveners can move a long way, coming from all the way over there. 
behind Objective 3, swinging round to get the second squad of bikes. Because it looks like the first squad of bikes are in some serious trouble. And of course the scouts still locked up with those gene stealers there. So we're going to have a lot of charges coming on here. A lot of charges coming up on the left flank. And maybe the Carnifex getting through the ruin as well. Now, you want to spend a stratagem? What's it called again? Rapid regeneration. Rapid regeneration on the Swarm Lord. Cost a command point and you get D3 wounds back. And he gets one wound back. Do you want to command point that as well? Spend two command points to get an extra wound. He's on eight. Yes. You are. Okay. Oh, okay. That was worth it. He's back up to 11 wounds remaining. So it costs you two command points, but uh, that's three wounds back on him. Now onto the psychic phase. Broodlord's casting. Smite. Smiting away. And that's a pass. This is D3 wounds. Two, two wounds on. It'll hit this squad here. Let's do six up Iron Hands chapter tactics. No, and two will die. Where do I want to take them from? Broodlord is there. You're going to hit. You're going to charge whatever you want to charge. So it doesn't really matter. Take them away. Uh, next up. Swarm Lord. Swarm Catalyst. Catalyst on the Swarm Lord to give him a five up ignore wounds. That passes. And he has two psychic powers. Just checking if it's warp charge six, actually. It is, yes. it is, yeah. And he's got two. What's his second power? Smite. Smite. I have been smitten. How many times? Just, one. One, just the one. Six up, which I fail. This squad, I'll take it from there. He smites one of them. And then across to the Turvagon, casting horror to this squad of bikes here that are about to be charged by the Ravenous. And that's a pass. Lovely. So that's minus one to hit. And it works in the shooting phase and the, um, phase. And the close combat phase as well. And he only has one psychic power, so that's it. That's not. No, it's not. Why is it not? Because we're going to use power of the hive mind for one additional psychic power. Okay, so a new stratagem coming into effect here. Cost a command point, and what psychic power are we doing? He's going to use the power which is smite. Smiting, okay. And <laughs> it cost you a command point, but unfortunately you didn't pull it off. And in the shooting phase, the Swarm Lord can move again, and he has. Wants to tie up these bikes which leaves the Brood Lord and the Hormogorns other options to uh, come slaughtering in, come wheeling into. And then in the shooting phase, little bugs firing through the windows at the scouts, not doing anything. Little bugs firing down at these bikes, not doing anything. And now the Trigon has got what? Bioelectric something? Bioelectric pulse with containment spikes. Okay, in at these bikes. These hit on fours. Bioelectric pulse with containment spines. And that's pretty good hitting. That's seven hits there. And this is strength five. Yes. So it's wounding on fours. And you get four wounds. It's AP zero. Yes. So three up save. With a six up Iron Hands chapter tactics. No. So one of the bikes takes a wound. And that's the end of the shooting phase. You do one wound on a bike. But then you haven't got much shooty. This is where the magic's going to happen though. In the fight phase. Right, then in the charge phase, the Hormogons, Hormogons, they Termogons. ate the over Termogons, they ate the Overwatch and they went in here. I did kill two as they came in, but the Trigon has engaged the bikes as well. And then the Raveners engaged the back squad of bikes. And I did cause two wounds to one of the Raveners, they have three wounds each on Overwatch. I know they're horrid, which is minus one to hit, but uh, Overwatch always hits on sixes. So two wounds on the Raveners there. And then the Swarm Lord made his way through into the bikes. The oh, These are Hormogons. They are Hormogons. They made it into that squad. And now we're doing the Brood Lord. The Brood Lord wants to engage the Stern Guard. We've measured up. It's an eight you need. An eight to get in. And I really don't want this to happen. And you roll an eight. The Brood Lord has engaged the Stern Guard as well. So multiple combats all the way across the line. Oh yeah. Let's overwatch you. And the Broodlord took two wounds to Overwatch as he came into the Stern Guard. What was that you said? Every time you do a film, you do really well. I know, so yeah, I should, yeah. Keep the camera in your hand. All right, Broodlord striking the Stern Guard, hitting on twos with six attacks. And you roll three ones. This is strength six at minus three AP, but any sixes to wound are minus six AP. I haven't seen a minus six anywhere before. Let's see if you can get, yeah, three wounds in and minus three each. So I need six up armor saves and I make none of them. And each does how many damage? D3. D3. Okay, first one does two, two six up, iron hands up, nope. Second one 
does three. Three six ups. Nope, he's dead. And the third one does two. Can I roll two sixes? No, I can't. I can roll one, but you kill three stern guard in that squad. Next up, the Hormogaunts. There's nine of them there, so this is 18 attacks, hitting on fours and re-rolling ones because of saving. Saving talents. talents. Nice. They're only strength three versus toughness four, so they're winning on fives. But you're re-rolling ones because of the high fleet adaptation cross. There was another five in there. You get to re-roll one more. And then re-rolling ones because you need fives to wound. Excellent. Any minuses to this? No. No minuses? How many saves have I got to make? Four. 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 Three up armor saves. And a six up iron hands chapter tactics. And one of the marines falls. So the swarm lord hitting the biker. Six attacks plus one for the tail. He hits on twos. Does he have a reroll? He doesn't need it. Everything hits. Strength yeah. 8, so it's 3s to wound versus bikes because they're toughness 5, and rerolling 1s because of the Gorgon thing. And that's a lot of wounds. That's 2 6s. Okay, so those 2 6s killed a bike already. I've got 4 left. These are minus 3, and each of them does a flat 3 damage. Used to be d6, but a flat 3. Basically, I need 6s, and every one I fail will kill a bike. That's the entire squad wiped out with ease. Actually, four saves there. I've got my Iron Hands thing, so two wounds each. So the first bike is dead. Second bike, I need sixes, is dead. Third bike is dead. I need two sixes to keep one alive. No, they're all dead. Everybody's dead, Dave. Wiped out. So the Swarm Lord there, killing with the Grav Gun and the um, Power Claw in there. That was like a 140 point unit, and he just cut through them before they even had a chance to breathe. He's consolidated into this front unit here. You have to go into the closest enemy unit, so he couldn't have hit both of them, which will stop this unit from shooting at him, because if I fall back out of combat, I can't shoot. So good tactical play there, and the Swarm Lord is, is right in my lines, frightening stuff. And then over here... We need a bucket load of dice to roll for all of these Ravenous. Ravenous, four attacks each, 24 dice, hitting on threes. Attacking with Rending Claws, this is strength four, so looking for fives, but sixes are minus four AP, so I won't get a save, and there's a few sixes in there. There is four sixes. There's four sixes in there, so that's two bikes wiped out straight away. And, and is fives. that in addition? Uh, two fives as well, just two. Just two. And these are minus one, so make those saves. But those four sixes kill two bikes because they have two wounds each. Right, then on to the Trigon Prime. He has six attacks plus one for his loadout. The Scything Talons there, so that's seven attacks. He's hitting on threes. And you're rerolling ones because they're Scything Talons. So all seven hit. Strength user. Uh, so strength seven, I believe. But wounding on threes. And rerolling ones because of your high fleet adaption. And that is nasty. Five wounds get through at minus three, so I need sixes, and each one does d6 damage. Wow, I make three of them. This one does d6, roll a one, go on, roll a one. Oh. There's a three. I need three six ups. No, so the first bike is dead, and the second one, roll a one. You roll a three again. Six ups, iron hands, chapter six. No, two bikes are dead because they have two wounds each, and now the tail hits. Tail hit and wounded, minus one AP, which I save. You only kill two bikes with that bad boy. And it looks like this. One was already wounded, but wounds don't spill over. And now we have these little bugs piling into the bikes as well. And the little bugs caused five wounds, five three up saves, and I make all the saves, nice. Then the gene stealers slaughtered three more of the scouts, and then it's my turn. So the scouts killed, didn't kill a gene stealer. These guys piled in there hurt a couple of little bugs. My bikes and the sergeant with a power axe hurt one of the ravenets. So long story short, three bikes left, three bikes left, one scout left. And I'm hurting them back and everything here is locked up and will probably be slaughtered next turn. Then we're moving along here. I've got some pile-ins to do. Six attacks on the swarm lord hitting on threes. Three hits. I need fives. One wound, he has his three up save, and he makes it. So no damage done there, and also no damage done here. The tactical marines failing to kill any of the bugs. And now the stern guard have 
piled in to the brood lord. He's only got four, four wounds left and I could kill him. Because Stern Guard have two attacks each and there's a sergeant there. So this is 15 attacks. Hitting on threes. And I'm wounding on fives. Uh, so that's quite good. That was 11 hits. Fives to wound though. And that's quite good as well. That's four wounds in total. He has four wounds left and he has a four up save. And he takes three wounds. He's down to one wound left. And I think that's the end of turn two. Some morale tests to make here. They lost three of the stern guard, but I am leadership nine, so they'll pass. Three in this squad, don't roll a six. They're okay. Nothing in that squad. He slaughtered the bikes. Over here, Two of the bikes died, but their leadership eight. Two of the bikes died, but their leadership eight, so they'll be okay, even if we're order six. Three scouts died. Sergeant's left alive. Three plus four is seven. So the Space Marines pass all their morale tests. They're holding across the line. And that's the end of Tyranid's turn two. And, and, and it's brutal. It's bloody. They are deep within my lines already. The Swarm Lord has stood right next to Objective 5, but ditching it anyway. There's too many Objective Secured units around. You're halfway towards defending objective one and you didn't get Kingslayer, so no point scored, but certainly lots of blood. These streets are beginning to run red. It's two points to the hive mind, one point to the 13th. Let's go on to Space Marines, turn two. Here are my orders. Defend objective three, area denial. Don't have any Tyranids within six inches of the center and they're swarming it. And advance, get out of my deployment zone. I don't really want to get out of my deployment zone. <laughs> I can't get out of my deployment zone. I'm locked up in combat all the way across the line. So I'm not going to be scoring any of these orders this turn. Here we are after my movement phase. There's defend three. I'm not going to be able to defend that. And certainly not advance. Get out of my deployment zone because I'm locked up and in combat here, there and everywhere. Area denial. They're within the center of the table. The Carnifex is in the center of the table. So not scoring any objectives this turn. And this unit of bikes, this guy cannot move within an inch of an enemy model. So he is locked there, which means my bike squad are locked there. But I did break free with my um, sergeant there, the scout sergeant, because he could kill my scout sergeant in my turn, which means in his turn, he would be free to rampage on. So by breaking free, he then has to either deal with him in his turn or leave him alone. And then the scout sergeant can run off up there later on and score line breaker and things like that. This unit of bikes, same deal here. If I left them with the Raveners and they get slaughtered this turn, then they're free to rampage the one. So I've fallen back. Won't be shooting, won't be shooting, won't be shooting. In the middle of the table, the scouts that were up here have jumped down to cause a blocking action on the Carnifex. Don't want him going straight through into the castle next turn. I've got to deal with the Swarm Lord. I don't want to deal with the Carnifex and the Swarm Lord. <laughs> and then here, breaking away. This is the squad that broke away from the Swarm Lord. I've got two squads coming through the gap. Mind the gap. Ready to plunge fire down. The castle staying still. Stern Guard breaking away from the Swarm Lord. Not shooting. This squad breaking away from the Hormagaunts, I want to say. Not shooting. Basically, there's not a lot of shooting going on here. But I need to kill these major threats this turn. If I don't kill these two HQ characters, which are also Synapse creatures, right? They'll be out of Synapse range as well. If I don't kill these two major nasty bugs then I'll have them to deal with, as well as this second wave, which will come spilling in. I'll have two waves to deal with. Need to give myself some breathing room. So let's pull the trigger. Just a slight adjustment at the end of the movement phase. Move the quad bolter forward here, so I can shoot the broodlord, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to shoot him, because he's a character. He's got one wound left. This thing now is hitting on fours, though, because it's heavy and it moved. So fours to hit. Just one wound. Just one wound. And that was, I'm seeing six hits here, which is nice. Strength five, toughness five. five. I thought it was six. Five, okay. Force to wound. And that was three wounds at minus one. So it's three, five up in vulnerable saves or the brood lord buys it. Please die. Do you want to command point that three up? Or are you happy to kill the brood lord?
the agony on your face is just it's priceless. Are you so, taking them away? I'm taking them away. You're taking them away. Dead brood lord. Right, so that was part one of the plan. Part two, kill the swarm lord. So, master craft of bolt gun stuff. Twos to hit with soul garrow. Both hit. Fives to wound. One wound at minus one. Which you make. And now the lieutenant. Threes to hit. Both hit. Need fives to wound. No wounds. This squad in front of him. Barrett the Broodlord. There's a flamer there. Where is the flamer? There's the flamer. That's four hits. Fives to wound. Three wounds. Three three up saves. And a five up feel no pain because you've got catalyst on him. So from 11 back down to 10. Let's chuck a grenade at him. Hits, strength six, toughness seven now, so only fives to wound. Doesn't wound. Rapid fire, bolt gun death. One wound with the bolt guns, one three up. <sighs> and a five up. And he takes another wound, he's down to nine. Now this squad, chucked a grenade, hit and wounded. We have a four up and vulnerable save. Or it does D3 damage, D3 damage. Only one, five up, feel no pain, which you make which you don't make, he's down to eight left. Then they rapid fired into him, doing no more damage. So eight left, so this squad is fired, this squad is fired, that squad is fired. Oh no, not that one. That one hasn't fired yet. There's another flamer there. Let's fire the flamer through. Six hits, it's a beautiful thing. Um, fives to wound. Uh, one, two, three, four, five wounds. Look at that. Five, three up saves. And you make all five saves. Then the bolt is rapid fired at him, taking another wound off of him. He's down to seven left. Right now, so they fired, they fired, they fired, they fired. Everything here that could only hit the Swarm Lord has shot at the Swarm Lord. And he's got seven wounds left. Do I fire the quad bolters at him? No, let's not do that. Let's fire the Predator at him because the Predator might kill him. So two last cannons, Swarm Lord to the face. Threes to hit, re-rolling ones, and there's a two. Command point. No, let's not command point. One hit. Wounds on a three. That's a wound. Four up and vulnerable save on the Swarm Lord. And you make it. And you make it. So Predator Auto Cannon at the Swarm Lord. Two D3 shots. Only four. Three shots, sorry. Only three shots hitting on threes. Two hits. Strength seven, toughness seven. One wound. One four up and bun. And you make that as well. So the Predator doesn't do anything. So let's fire everything from the Devastators down at him as well. Three last cannons for the Emperor. Only two hit. Command point, sod it, let's do it. <laughs> that's a miss. And I can re-roll ones, but you can't re-roll a re-roll. So that's only two hits. Strength nine, toughness seven. <sighs> No wounds, re-rolling the one, no wounds. All of those last cannons flashing by him, this is not good. Heavy bolter, heavy bolter. Re-rolling once. And now I need fives to wound. Nothing. So the Devastator squad and the Predator fail to wound the Swarm Lord. He just shrug, shrugs off all of that firepower. Oh dear. So I'm going to have to fire the quad bolter at him. I was saving up to try and whittle away some of these guys here. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm not going to be able to kill him. Even if I fire the quad bolter in at the Storm Lord now, even if I put the whirlwind in at the Swarm Lord now, I'm not going to be able to kill him. He's going to have free reign to slaughter a couple more sock squads with Psychic Scream and everything. And he's on seven and you can burn another stratagem again for rapid regeneration and put wounds back on him. I'm not going to be able to kill him with a quad bolter. So let's stick to the plan. I need to kill this squad. Let's kill this squad with a quad bolter. So threes to hit the little bugs. Rerolling ones. So with the rerolls, that was nine hits. It's threes to wound at minus one. So you would just be picking them up. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Six little bugs go pop. Do you reroll ones? Oh yeah, reroll ones. Six. Seven. And not looking so threatening now. So that was that was okay. That was okay. I got a whirlwind to do. That's all I have left to fire. 
As the whirlwind is the last thing left to fire, I'm going to shoot at these little bugs here. They're within 12 inch range of the Swarm Lord, which is a synapse creature, so they'll pass morale and charge something and prevent that thing from firing again next turn. So I have to kill them. It's a lot of overkill. Whirlwind at the little bugs. 2d3 shots. That's four shots. Um, hitting on threes, re-rolling ones. They all hit strength seven, so making them go pop on twos and re-rolling ones. Yeah, they went pop as it went up, down, blew them the crap up. And the last thing left to fire were the scouts selling their lives against this Carnifex, chucking grenades and shooting and didn't do anything. So now we're on to the charge phase. I'm definitely not charging the Swarm Lord. He gets a three up in vulnerable save when I charge him. So there is no point. And we then descend back over here to these combats. I'm the active player, so I'll go first. He'll pile in that way. Strike the Trigon Prime, he's a sergeant, he hits on threes, one hit, with his power claw. I need a five and I can re-roll and I don't wound. And then the two normal guys hitting the bugs, both hit, and one wound. Trigon Prime strikes back, did three wounds, I need three sixes, and I save one again. Then at the end of that combat, this is what they look like. The little bugs doing nothing. The sergeant locked up with the Trigon Prime and the little bugs. No morale checks to make. And that's the end of turn two. I've still got some squats on the right flank, slowing up the Tyranid advance. And the scouts are bravely standing in the middle, ready to provide locking, blocking action on that Carnifex. But I failed in my mission on this side of the battle grid. Yes, the Broodlord is dead and some Hormagaunts. But the Swarm Lord is an army of one, and he's got seven wounds left. And I score no objectives at the end of turn two. And Dave scores two objectives, two points for defending objective one for two turns in a row. So it's actually four points to the Tyranids and only one point to the Space Marines as we go into Tyranid, turn three. Here are the Tyranid objectives and they're good. Advance, get out of their deployment zone, which they pretty much already have. Blood and Guts, kill something in the assault phase, which is like breathing to them. And Kingslayer, destroy Sol Garrow. Here we are after the Tyranid movement phase. The Trigon Brime has broken out of combat with the lone Sergeant Biker because he thinks the Gene Stealers can deal with that Sergeant. I think he's a hero and he'll be able to withstand the charge. And the Ravener's moving into the second squad of Bikers, but... If you get rid of both of them, then apart from this sergeant, uh, scout, that will be this flank gone. Uh, the turbo gone has moved over, the Carnifex has moved over. There's some scouts stood right in front of that turbo gone. And little bugs, and little bugs, you have advanced out of your deployment zone and the noose is closing and there is a swarm about to come crashing into the castle in the middle. And the Swarm Lord has jumped up and over. He doesn't like the Whirlwind. Um, I think that's going to be a dead Whirlwind. That's it for the movement phase. You're burning a stratagem again for regeneration, right? Yes. So down to four command points. And this is D3 wounds back on the Swarm Lord. Three command points left. Yep. Three. <laughs> Three command. So he's gone back from seven to ten again. Nice. Nice. He's actually regenerated six wounds in this battle. Yeah, just double check, down to two command points left. And now the Swarm Lord is doing what in a psychic phase? Smite. Smite. Smiting away, need a five. And that passes, and that will hit the Whirlwind for D3 mortal wounds and take one off of it. And now I'm sure he's catalysting, right? He is. And this is a six you need. And you pass it. So five up, feel no pain again. Ten wounds remaining again. One wound off the Whirlwind. And the last cycle that you have is the Turbogon right in the middle of the table. And what is she doing? Uh, smite. Smite away. And that's a pass for D3 mortal wounds. And that'll be two on the scouts. Two six up saves. Two scouts by it. Now we're on to the shooting phase. The Trigon Prime won't be able to shoot because it fell back out of combat. But we've got lots and lots of little bugs firing through the gap in the middle of the castle. So we have 18 flesh borer shots coming through into this squad here. So, and it's fours to hit. He's a strength four weapon, but because the unit contains at least 20 models, and it does, hail of ammunition kicks in. So strength four, toughness four, but with hail of ammunition, you're rerolling ones to wound. 
and there are no ones there. But you did do 10 wounds, 10 three up saves, and then Iron Hands chat tactics. Look, I made eight of them, brilliant. And I need sixes. No, so two from this squad die. Then the second squad gets the fire. The second volley of fire from the little bugs didn't cause any wounds to this tactical squad. However, the Stinger Salvo from the Turvagon killed one of the scouts, leaving two left there. And that's the end of the shooting phase. The Tyranids want blood and guts. So now let's go on to the charge phase. Here we are after the charge phase. The Swarm Lord makes it in, no damage done. Khan affects living battering ram going against the Tech Marine. This squad tried to charge these first, and uh, three of them died on Overwatch. Then they failed to charge. Then the second squad got in, and I killed a couple with Overwatch as well, because there's a combi flamer in there. So get to Overwatch one squad, then get to Overwatch the second squad. So kill in a couple of Gribblies before they come charging through the gap. Um, the Turvagon made it into combat here. And over here I killed a Ravner. There was a Ravner on one wound left, so as they came into this unit of bikes... I killed one as well, and so there's only four Raveners left. Should mention, we're just talking to each other, that uh, it is turn three and the Ripper Scorns needed to come in before the end of this turn, and they've popped in way out of line of sight under there, ready to go right or left, whatever direction they need to do um, in further game turns, making sure they're more than 12 inches away from the Tyranid deployment zone guaranteeing advance forgot to narrate that earlier on so that's where the ripper swarms are and uh what are you thinking uh, at the end of the fight for um charge phase yes you do a mortal wound on oh. a four plus on who the tech marine with the yes. effects mortal wound that isn't a mortal wound so that's the end of the charge phase and now we're on to the fight phase and if you kill three units you get D3 points for blood and guts. Starting off the fight phase, Carnifex versus Tech Marine. Carnifex has four attacks. He's got plus one attack because of... The Scything Talons. Scything Talons. Plus one attack because of... Tusks. The Tusks. So that gets him up to six. And he has a Thresher Scythe attack. And a Thresher Scythe attack. That gets him up to seven. He normally hits on fours, but on the turn when a Carnifex charges in, he hits on threes. So in he comes... And he re-rolls ones because of his scything talons. Excellent. And he wounds on strength six against toughness. Four. Threes. Threes to wound, re-rolling ones. And this is minus a lot. Minus three. Minus three. He's a tech marine, so I need five up saves. I make two of them. How much damage does it do each? Flat three. Flat three, so I need six feel no pains. And he has four wounds. I make two of them, but you do kill that tech marine with ease. And so the Carnifex runs over the tech marine, consolidates a further three inches in, drawing these into combat. But more importantly, I won't be able to shoot him in my shooting phase with las cannons and things like that. So that's one thing killed for blood and guts. That's definitely a point. You kill three things. D three points. What are we on to next? Swarm lord. Swarm lord. Old swarmy. Two's to hit. He's bone savers first. And everything hits. Rerolling the ones? No? No. No. Uh, strength seven, toughness seven. Wounds on fours. That was four wounds in total. Strength eight, toughness seven. The sixth is a mortal wound in addition, putting it down to nine wounds remaining. The whirlwind. It's minus three. So I need four sixes. Or it's dead. Is dead. The whirlwind has fallen. Does it blow up? Please blow up. It doesn't blow up. And just like the Carnifex, the Swarm Lord consolidates into combat as well, locking up these units, preventing them from shooting. Now the Turvagon, four attacks, hitting on fours, did you say? Three attacks Three. hitting on fours. Three attacks hitting on fours. Two hits, re-rolling ones because of the sizing talons. No, nope. two hits. Wounding on, don't know. Let's say threes. threes, okay, and re rolling ones to wound, and then minus three AP. So one dies, does a lot of damage. I'm just gonna take one off, don't worry about the yeah, don't playing. worry about the iron hands thing. He's dead. It is d6 damage, d6 damage. So there's yeah. a chance I could roll a one, okay, three, three, three sixes. 
No, he kills one, only one. But four have died in that squad this turn, so it's very likely that I'm gonna lose a morale. Little bugs over here. Ravenous over here. What do you want to do next? Ravenous. Ravenous. They are ravenous. Ravenous coming in for round two, hitting on threes, four attacks each. Have these guys got a reroll to hit? Uh, no, because I'm going with the rending claws. Rending claws. Okay, so that's a lot of hits. Rending claws are strength to user, right? Yes. So this is strength five, toughness, strength four, toughness strength five. Four. So I need fives. You only get two. I can reroll ones. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and you only two. get two. Oh, no. But one was a six. One's a six, which does um, minus a lot, right? Minus three AP. Minus four AP. Minus four. Oh. So one just kills one, and then one six up save. Wound. Oh, no, minus one save. The five is a minus one, so that's a wound, and the six hurts one as well. Minus what on the six? Minus four on the six. Minus four. So that was two wounds done, so two six up, feel no pains. And a biker lives, strangely enough. You keep whiffing the Ravenous. So the Ravenous not cutting the mustard there. I guess they're cheap and fast and can move all over the place, but um, yeah, they're not. They're not doing it against these bikes yet, but they are shutting down the shooting attack. Now we're onto the Gene Stealers. You want to kill a third thing. And they have a lot of attacks. Hitting on threes. Rerolling ones on these as well. Talon things. No, no. Rending claws. Rending claws, okay. And these are strength four. Toughness five on that bike. This sergeant's going to hold, I'm telling you. Maybe not. <laughs> so. Reroll the ones. There's two sixes there. The sixes are minus four, right? Yes. So the sixes, I need six up iron hands, chapter for tactics. And he lives. And then there's five more, which are minus one. Minus one. So these are four ups. And if I roll a six, he's alive. I don't roll a six. He's dead. Okay, he's not going to make it. And then this, after the sergeant, we're over here to this shutting down technique. Lots of little bugs smacking into this tactical squad. They pile in, cause five wounds in the attack. Five threat saves. And a fail one, iron hands. And a pass, the iron hands. And they do no damage. And that's the end of the charges of the fights for the Tyranids, now I get to strike back. So the 13th strike back, a couple of the Termagants injured. I managed to put two wounds on the Carnifex, which is a miracle in itself. It's got six left. Um, oh, I forgot to strike the Trigon. Uh, one hit, Tervagon, and I wound. I do wound the Tervagon. Yes. Oh. And you make the save. You want to fail that save because then it will get up to toughness 9 with that uh, bio artifact. And then over here, I actually killed a Ravner. There's a Power Axe in that squad there. Power Axe is a minus 2. So I killed a Ravner. So these, this bike squad are holding their own. And then at the end of turn 3, not only is my right flank pretty much absolutely collapsed, and this is what the center looks like. It's four points to one. You've advanced outside of your deployment zone and you get D3 points for blood and guts. And that's another three. So that's four points plus your four points. It's eight points to one in favor of the uh, Tyranids. Let's go on to the 13th, turn three. Have a morale test there. He's not a sergeant because of combat squatting. And reroll because of animation, no, no fear. That's a pass. That's the only one I need to make. Now we go on to turn three. Here are my objectives, Witch Hunter, Defend 3 and Area Denial. Okay, in my movement phase, the bike's falling out of combat. I want to overwatch these Raveners again. The Scout advancing up the table, going for Lion Breaker. He quite likes the colour of that uh, cathedral there. Wants to go charging in it. And then round here, these two squads falling back, so they're not going to be able to shoot. And I've got another squad running up the left flank, thinking about Lion Breaker as well. And it's about killing the Swarm Lord. Need to kill the Swarm Lord. And the Carnifex. I think if I kill the Swarm Lord and the Carnifex, even though it's eight points to one, there might be some comeback for me. Maybe. Shooting phase. Spending a command point to get their plus one to wound. Let's shoot the Swarm Lord threes to hit. It would be fives to wound with a stern guard, but with that command point, it's fours to wound. And that's seven wounds at minus two. So he has seven four up and vulnerable saves to make. And then Catalyst. 
and you fail three of them, you make okay, so four, yeah, four, five up and buns, or five up catalysts. Is it yeah. one damage? One damage each, yeah. And he takes three wounds. Three wounds, back down to seven again, same as last turn. Right. Predator, firing at him. Two las cannons to the face. One hit, re-rolling once. One hit, wounding on a three. That's a wound, one four up and bun. No, and this does D6 damage. Six damage, six catalyst saves to make sir. He's got seven wounds left. And he takes three more, putting him down to four. And now the Predator Auto Cannon Turret has three, four shots in total. It's two T3 shots, hitting on threes, re-rolling ones, they all hit. Strength seven, toughness seven, uh, three wounds in total at minus one, or minus two, minus one. So three, four up saves. And you fail all three, and each does three damage. That's nine damage on the Swarm Lord. He's got four wounds left, and you've got Catalyst. Unless you command point it. You're going to have to do it. You're thinking about it. I'm going to use command point on one of them. No. So this is nine. Five up. Catalyst saves. You nearly, nearly, uh, I'm gonna make it through. That's five there. Five wounds, six. six wounds. The swarm lord dies. Has he got that death rose thing? He has. Is he gonna lash out on a six? On a six, he essentially explodes. He doesn't explode, and that is slay the warlord, and that is the end of the swarm lord, and that's witch hunter. Next up, and I'm gonna be really, really cheeky here. The devastator squad. Is only going to fire one las cannon and the heavy bolter down at the Carnifex. And the other two las cannons are going to go in at the Turbogon. The scout broke out of combat last turn. So let's do that. Uh, one las cannon at the Carnifex, hitting on a three, re rolling once. So that's a hit. And I wound on a three. That's a wound. At minus three to your save. You need a six up. And you don't get it. And this does D6 wounds. And he's got six left. Can I roll a six? Again, no, that's a four, putting him down to two wounds left. Signum on the heavy bolter, hellfire rounds. Hellfire rounds forged during the first tyrannic war to kill bugs like this. With the Signum, I will hit on a two. This cost me a command point to fire a hellfire shell. And that's a hit. And this automatically does D3 mortal wounds. Looking for a three up to kill it because it's only got two wounds left. And that's a dead Carnifex. Woohoo! And then two last cannons in at the Turvagon. Threes to hit. Re rolling ones because the captain stood nearby. No, and both of those last cannons missed. So splitting fire didn't work, but I did kill the Carnifex. And there's two bolt guns in that squad as well. Threes to hit. Fives to wound. No. Right. Quad bolter from here at the Turbogon. Toughness eight at the moment, toughness eight. And if I get a wound with this thing, it gets it up to toughness nine. So instead, let's fire this. Mind you, if I fire at these little Hormagons, Termagons, <laughs> and don't kill them all, then she just regenerates up to 10 a turn every turn for free, right? As long as they're within six inches. As long as they're within six inches of her. But I've got a quad bolter here, which is 36 inch range. I've got a quad bolter here, that's 24 shots. Can you see him? Yes, I can. I might be able to kill them all. Yeah, let's fire at them. This quad bolter, without the benefit of re-rolls, in at them. Threes to hit. And that is eight hits. Threes to wound at minus one AP. They'll just go pop. Uh, seven wounds in total. Seven get popped. And then the next one. Rerolling ones. That's not bad, that's 11 hits there. I knocked one of those and turned it over, but that was 11 hits. Threes to wound, and they go pop. And I'm rerolling ones to wound. I just killed 11. 11. 
That is 11. I, I killed 11. There's 8 left. Nice. There was. So those 24 quad bottle shots did a number. I've just suddenly got a gap. It's 8 points to 1, but suddenly there's a gap. Because there's no Swarm Lord, there's no Carnifex. This squad is locked up. Um, but I think that's it for my shooting phase. That's it, because they fell back, that fell back. That's it for my shooting phase. 8 points to 1. Slay the Warlord is another point. 8 points to 2. And they get a point for killing the witch. That's eight points to three. Let's go to Tyranids, turn four. Here are the Tyranid objectives in turn four. Secure four, defend six, and Kingslayer still in his hand. So here's six that you need to defend for two turns. You could leave the Raveners there, but if I get the bikes in there, then no one's going to be able to defend that. However, there's some troops with objectives secured that can come round and start defending that for two turns. To secure four... This is for here. All he needs to do is fall back with the Termagaunts. I uh, forgot to do the combat, so we just did it, by the way. I killed two in that squad. They didn't kill any in my squad, in my tactical squad, so we just did that one off camera. They are still in 12-inch range of the Termagon. Yes. Termagon, I got it right. They're still in range of Big Mama. Big Mama is making them fearless. They don't have to pass any morale tests. So, uh, yeah, and that's the only squad down here that could potentially score for, unless Big Mama wants to run down the centre and try and grab that objective there. So, opportunities to score points here all over the place. Sol Garrow will be safe, I think, for this game. He will walk away unsaved. And in fact, I think I might start go wheeling in. I didn't want to go wheeling in against the Swarm Lord because he would have a three up and vulnerable saving plus combat. But he is quite happy to go and slaughter some small bugs. Eight points to three. Chance to get some more points for the nids. Here we are after the movement phase. The Termagaunt did fall back. Now, an interesting thing that happens in this new codex. Um, you have to spawn Termagaunts into them at the start of the movement phase. Beforehand, it was at the end of the movement phase. Yes. Yeah? yeah. And she wasn't within six inches of them. Um, in the previous edition, in the index, you could have spawned them, you could have moved them, then spawned them, and they would have been bolstered. But because she's outside of six, they're not getting bolstered at the start of the movement phase. Instead, she's come crashing through this gap in the ruins that way now. The Raveners are up and over the wall. This unit of Termagaunts have advanced, and they are beginning to defend this objective, and the Gene Stealers are going back for that one last scout sergeant. Um, doesn't want me running up the board and getting line breaker uh, later on in the game. And the Trigon Prime also pushing forward as well. So two big beasties left. Ripper Swarm's behind that wall there, tucked in. They're going to be safe for most of the game and prevent the Tyranids from being tabled because I don't think I can table you. But once I kill these two big beasties, if I kill these two big beasties, then Synapse will crumble. So let's go on to turn five psychic, turn four psychic. The horror on the Devastators, so it's minus one for them to hit, and that passes. So minus one leadership, minus one for them to hit. Now we're shooting. They can't shoot, they fell back. They can't shoot, they advanced. But you can shoot the Trigon Prime, and that's it. He advanced. He advanced as well. Yes, Shoot phase is, over. The shooting <laughs> is going to be the Turbigon into the Scout. Turbigon into Scout, great. And she hits twice or three times? Twice. twice. One wound. One wound. Um, I'm in a ruin. I save it. Scout lives. That's the end of the shooting phase. Sh shortest shooting phase ever. Now we have some charges. Who's charging what now? So the Turbagon is charging in against the Devastators. You need sixes to hit on Overwatch, but then uh, minus one to hit with a horror. But in Overwatch, it's always sixes to hit, regardless of modifiers. And there's three last cannons. And I get a hit. Strength nine, toughness eight at the moment. And I don't wound. And I re-roll ones to wound because of that. So I might wound. And I do wound. She has a six up save. At which she fails. This will take six damage off of her. Which takes two damage off of her and puts her up to <laughs> toughness nine now because of the relic that you have. After the, the end of the phase. And this is the heavy bolters and one hit with a heavy bolter, which also wounds. Now she has a four up. 
Oh, actually take three wounds off of the Turbogon. We measured up, it's an eight inch charge, so you need seven to be below that chap there and get in combat. And you roll a four. You've got one command point left. Are you saving it? Yes. Keeping it in your pocket. So how many wounds does she start off with? 14. 14, so she's down to 11. But more importantly, with that artifact, she's now a toughness nine Turbogon. So these las cannons, when I fire back at her, with this horrid unit, We'll be wounding on fours. Now we've got the Ravenous coming in. Let's do the grab gun, which misses. And I'll do all the rapid fire and bolt guns off camera. No damage done on Overwatch to the Ravenous. And the shotgun wielding sergeant blew a gene steal away as he ran into combat there. Now let's go on to the fight phase. These are the wounds for the Ravna. The five is a minus one. And that's a save. And the six is a minus three. And there's four. minus four. So he dies. And that one, uh, and that one, oh yeah, six ups. So I've got four six ups to make. And I make three of them. Oh no, just he dies. This bike squad, unbelievable. Now the gene stealers. And they only did two wounds at minus one, two five ups, and I roll three dice. So on a one two, it was that one. On a three four, I made the three four five six, I made the save. I made the save. Yeah? Yes. Does that make sense yeah, to you? So he survives. They survive, now I get to strike back. Normal sergeant, normal guy, hits on a three, wounds on a four. That's a wound on a Ravener. She's got two wounds left, he saves. Power axe on the sergeant, two hits. I need threes to wound and it'll kill that one. <laughs> I kill a Ravener. Because they have three wounds each, but it's minus enough. And killing a Ravener. That wasn't supposed to happen. Now I've got my sergeant kill a gene sealer. Threes to hit. No, he can't. <laughs> then that's the end of turn. No morale test to take there. Turn four. No morale test to take there. And yeah, that's the end of your turn four. Yes. 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 Right, you've got that objective. So that's nine points to three. You've got Kinslayer in your hand, which I can see you're ditching. And you're beginning to defend objective six, which is here. So nine points to three as we go into the space marines. Turn four. Here are my objectives in turn four. Still got area denial, so need to clear the center of the table. Defend four and no prisoners, just kill stuff. Right, before the movement phase, just a couple of things. We put the barrel down to show you where the center of the battle grid is. And there are some ripper swarms behind that wall there. So there's no way I'll be able to shoot them and get that objective. So I can't get area denial. And there's defend objective four. Now we've measured up, I can stick a unit in there and score that um, objective secure that if I kill enough bugs. So this unit needs to advance to get in there. Five, so that'll give me lots of movement options to get enough units there within three inches of defending objective four, and then I just need to blow them away, which will also get me a point for no prisoners. So let's move stuff. Here we are after my movement phase. Quad bolter here staying still, but this quad bolter getting down so I can get shots in at the Turbogon, and then these five man combat squads spreading out all over the place. That one advancing, there was another one here which has advanced all the way around there providing a screen for the Devastator so she doesn't have a free run straight through at the Devastators. And that's pretty much it. The bike's fallen out of combat one more time so they can overwatch if I need to overwatch. Let's go on to the shooting phase. And this is the end of my turn four. I have killed that squad there, get one point for no prisoners, and I've started to defend objective four. And then everything else that could fire Fired at the Turbogon, and she's toughness uh, nine now. And this squad was horrid, and I didn't cause any wounds whatsoever. And from the point of view of the um, Predator, she was getting plus one to her save as well because she's in a ruin and 50% is obscured. Long story short, killed some Gaunts. That's it. So it's four points to nine, and we go into Tyranids, turn five. Here are the Tyranid objectives, secure two, secure five, and no prisoners just killed stuff. Stuff, And at the end of turn four, Dave Scords defend objective six because he's been on that for two turns. So it's actually 11 points to four. 
11 points to 4. And to stop me getting area denial, he's already doing that with the rippers. And to stop me defending 4, all he needs to do is advance through there to stop me defending that. So I won't be able to get it. The trigon and all of these guys can definitely kill the bugs, the bikes, which will make it 12 points to 4. And I don't think there's any way back. I've had a look at my next couple of cards. There is no way back for me here. So I'm going to call it at this stage. This is the way the world ends. Yeah, 11 points to 4. I'm not going to be able to get any of these objectives in the middle. That will just be easily denied. And more points for the Tyranids. 12 points to 4. And that will be a lot of points that I have to pull back from. Yes, I could start picking on the monstrous creatures here. But all he needs to do is start pulling back now. This Toughness 9 Turbagon is, is unkillable. All he needs to do is start pulling back with his Swarm. Pull back, pull, pull away. And there's no way I'm going to be able to get 8 more points and come back for this. So we don't want to keep going on and on and on and on. Um, to show you guys my inevitable decline. And I think we did enough there to demonstrate what the new bugs can do. Long story short, I bought some speed with some bikes so I could zip up the table and grab objectives. But because this is a very aggressive close combat Tyranid army, my bikes didn't get out of my deployment zone. The lot of bodies, which I thought would lead to a good blood count game, high body count game, they worked. It was certainly a high body count and stopped the wave upon wave of Tyranids come crashing in. But then there was no mobility, except for the bikes, and then the bikes couldn't get out of there. I did like regeneration on the, on the Swarm Lord, him getting his wounds back and then getting his wounds back again. That was very good. And it was good to see one of the t new Tyranid fleet rules, um, bio adaptions coming in, high fleet adaptions coming in, re-rolling to wound in the fight phase with a lot of Scything Talons, is it? With the size and talents rerolling the wounds to hit, wants to hit, and then rerolling wants to wound came into effect again and again and again. I was a couple, lucky in a couple of areas. The Raveners and this squad should have, <laughs> should have gone through those bikes and it should be further up the table right now. And they should have killed that sergeant over there and it should be further up the table now. But you were quite lucky. If I'd have killed the Swarm Lord a turn earlier, then that extra turn that took me to kill the Swarm Lord. I could have diverted all my firepower down the table on your big bugs, stopped you scoring so many points in that turn, and pushed you back. So that regeneration on the Swarm Lord and him staying alive for that extra turn, I think that was the pivotal point of the game. Well, I certainly enjoyed myself. I always love a bug hunt. What do you think, Dave? You've been playing Tyranids for five or six years. What do you think of your new codex? I think it's good. I'm enjoying the um, adaptability, the way I can, I can tailor the the high fleet to suit the style you want to play. I mean, I've got lots of units that I could sit back and just blast away and play high fleet sort of Kronos, and that would be probably the most competitive choice, but sometimes it's fun just to play Starship Troopers or Aliens and just try and swarm forward and eat people. <laughs> and swarming forward and eating people, that's a, that's a tried and tested tactic. You've shown that it can work here. Just overwhelm the battle grid with wave upon wave of bodies. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed that battle report, guys. Um, check me out on Patreon if you want to support me. And um, happy wargaming.